Matrix Home Solutions Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Jennifer Granholm is the energy secretary. Seriously, she is. I mean, it's so. When I was homesick, I watched her talk for a while, and I just said, "Are you? That's the best they could do." Her. She is to energy policy what uh, Peabot Mayor Pete Buttigieg <laughs> is to transportation policy. You can decide if that's a compliment or not. He likes the choo-choo in the airports. He got engaged at the airport. It's a wonderful story. It is uh, Jennifer Granholm. Uh, made a big announcement about an alleged scientific breakthrough in fusion power this week. This was uh, her breathless offering. And that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Or as the president might say. Right. Yeah. Please clap, please. And the seals and the, and the tax eaters clap, right? I do think he probably did say this is a BFD. <gasps> <laughs> oh, 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 delightful. Um, Tom right. Hartsfield is a Ph.D. physicist. There is no breakthrough. NIF fusion power still consumes 130 times more energy than it creates. So calm down. If you gave me $400 and I gave you $3.15, would you consider yourself wealthier? That's the financial allergy, analogy for the supposed fusion power breakthrough. And he provides some detail of what's going on over at the National Ignition Facility uh, the, in pursuit of fusion power technology. And nobody's discounting the pursuit of fusion power innovation and tech. But but let's just be honest about where we're at versus these the press release politics you get from these political hacks. Um, this hyped breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, NIF's laser fusion energy output jumped by twenty five hundred percent, a sign of a significant physics breakthrough on the crucial problem of thermonuclear burn this that was um, last year this week's announcement is an increase in fusion energy output relative to laser energy output from 70 percent in 2021 to 154 percent in 2022 this in incremental possibly incidental progress toward uh, toward thermonuclear burn is not a breakthrough the facility has at last achieved slightly more fusion output than laser input ignition. On paper, that's a major symbolic victory. In practice, it's of little consequence. Here's why. The laser energy delivered to the target was, I mean, without getting these well, some details, but anyway, you've got to hear the argument. Yeah. You can read this at BigThink.com. The laser energy delivered to the target was 2.05 megajoules, and fusion output was likely about 3.15 megajoules. According to multiple sources on NIF's website, the input energy to the laser system is somewhere between 384 and 400 megajoules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it, just giving you the data to get to the point. In terms of electrical power, the 3.15 megajoules creates enough power almost to operate a 40-watt refrigerator light bulb for a day. Congratulations, it's a BDDL, yes. To, uh, yeah, BFD. BFD. Uh, to produce useful power, NIF would need to increase the fusion output of each experiment by at least 100,000%. That's an enormous scientific challenge to resolve before commercial operation can even be considered. So again, this is not anti-fusion power research or anti-research generally in the energy sector, of course. It's just let's understand where we're at and where we need to go before we're uh, talking about major policy breakthroughs or uh, feasible alternative 
energy sources. And of course, you don't get that from these, you know, uh, cable eco, stations never even never even said what it, how, what it created. The, 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 One the, day the eco, of a refrigerator. The, the, like they're all. they're eco propagandists is what yeah. they are, and it's just a little tiresome. And you know, it's not like there is not a distillation of this these sorts of pronouncements like from Granholm out there to be had, but too few are intellectually you know, curious enough to pursue. I, I suppose, particularly on the left, they don't need to. Uh, Lewis Andrews, he's a Connecticut-based writer who addresses politics, economics, and social policy from a broadly Christian perspective. And he's written a piece about uh, energy policy and the uh, contentious relationship between these eco-alarmists and, say, the fossil fuel companies. Lewis Andrews joins us now. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hi, Dan. Good morning. Good morning. So, you know, I, you don't need to go down the rabbit hole I did with fusion power, but it's, it's, it's not about that power source. It's just about the um, purposeful misleading of the public by politicians like Jennifer Granholm. And, of course, they do that when it comes to uh, big oil as well. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, a little footnote here. The interest, most interesting thing about fusion power is that the best fuel for fusion is considered to be something called helium-3, which is a rare element on Earth, comes from the sun and our atmosphere blocks it out. But the moon's surface is saturated with it. And uh, it may be that in the future, if they ever do get something out of fusion, it'll be because Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos brought it back from the moon. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Well, there you yeah. go. Let's, let's, uh, let's be, uh, you know, explore the bounds of the universe and let's be creative and innovative and entrepreneurial. But, um, but that's actually a, a real philosophical divide because those on the other side of this discussion see uh, our path through central planning. Yeah, you know, what, what I was writing about, and, and there's a very strong progressive element in the environmental movement. And uh, progressives had a store, have historically had uh, a real hatred of oil companies. I mean, this goes back to when John D. Rockefeller set up Standard Oil at the end of the 19th century. And so what uh, the environmentalists do is they're, I think, using the environment as a way to go after the oil companies, uh, try to fund them in one way or another. And it's really a stupid thing to do because the oil companies are doing some really interesting things these days that can be very helpful with the environment, uh, fusion being one of them. Uh, Chevron Oil is a big investor in fusion. Really? Yeah, um, give us a couple of other examples because you provide them in your piece at the Spectator about what the big oil companies are doing in the in the area of alternative energy. Yeah, there are a lot of interesting things going on. I mean, there's what you know they call carbon capture. You know, which is Exxon uh, Mobil is very invested in that, trying to find ways to take carbon emissions, you know, out of uh, oil and and uh, coal. Uh, there's something called hydrogen power, which is obtaining uh, fuel uh, from hydrogen from water. Uh, they can do it. At the moment, it costs a lot of money to do it, but they're trying to get the price down. Chevron is very committed to doing that. Uh, British Petroleum, BP, has been very involved with getting um, what they call biomass, which is um, a gas that leaks from landfills that uh, is very low carbon. So the oil companies are doing a lot of interesting things. I was in uh, London last year visiting my daughter. She works over there. And uh, if you walk up and down the streets of London, you see these uh, charging stations for cars. Uh, London is, is, is pretty much ahead of this, of the U.S. in this. But if you look closely at them, they're all made by British Petroleum and Shell Oil. They've been wiring London uh, for uh, battery-powered cars. So it, it's really silly to try to defund these companies because they're not oil companies, they're energy companies, and they probably understand more about producing energy than any other companies in the world. Well, speaking of electric cars, let's talk about California's legislature's plan to ban all gas-powered vehicles by 2035. First of all, is that feasible, and how is that wreaking havoc on the state's economy? Uh, well, you, you know, you've been hearing in the news over the summer uh, about all the brownouts they had in California because they tried to shut down uh, uh, nuclear power and they tried to shut down uh, 
uh, oil burning utilities, and as a result, they they don't have enough uh, energy to power their electric cars. Um, the uh, California environmentalists think that the energy problem is going to be solved by uh, putting windmills and solar panels uh, all over the state. But I saw an interesting statistic the other day that if you were going to meet America's energy needs with solar power and wind, you would have to cover a land mass equal to uh, the New England states, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio combined. And, and there's just not enough room for all the windmills and solar panels that would be needed. So, you know, wind and solar, uh, which the Californians, you know, are trying to move to, is part of the solution, uh, but so is uh, um, uh, carbon capture from um, traditional, you know, oil-burning machinery and uh, biomass and hydrogen and hydropower and hopefully one-day fusion. Uh, One of the concerns, though, even you're talking about some of the – uh, the the sectors in which the big oil companies are investing, the alternative energy sectors. Concerns, though, is how much of that is uh, a belief in there's a real potential ROI uh, and how much of that is misallocation of resources incentivized by government policy, whether it's subsidies or regulations or threats of regulation? Well, you know, uh, I think the president uh, – earlier this year passed what he called the Inflation Reduction Act, which was very badly misnamed. I mean, it was really uh, dedicating a lot of government funding to various projects in the environmental area. And I'm sure a lot, we're going to discover two or three years from now, that a lot of money was put into things that was a complete, that were a complete waste. Uh, and taxpayers will probably lose trillions of dollars investing in things that aren't going to work out because they're going to be decided uh, by government agencies. Uh, the history of the oil companies is that they spend money very well. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything they do works out, uh, but that's good too because they're experimental. They're entrepreneurial. They're trying right. things. Right. So uh, I, I'm not saying that everything the oil companies are currently invested in, biomass, hydrogen, carbon capture, is going to work out, but uh, – uh, if I were a country that had some big oil companies uh, putting lots of money into trying different energy sources, that would make me happy. It wouldn't make me sad. He is Lewis Andrews, Connecticut-based writer who addresses politics, economics, and social policy from a broadly Christian perspective. Do check out his piece, How Hating Big Oil Undermines the Environment at The Spectator. We'll tweet it out. Lewis Andrews, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey Dot pro answer line. If you're talking about it, Dan and Amy are talking about it. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. A great smile can make you feel happy and confident. So when you consciously conserve your teeth, that glowing smile will show through. At Best Dental Group, doctors Economos, Gavalis, and their staff are ready to help you create that perfect look or maintain the one you have now. Along with general dentistry, Best Dental Group is a multidisciplined practice with an orthodontist, periodontist, and prosthetic specialists on site. They use the newest breakthroughs in dental technology, such as titanium implants, Invisalign clear braces, and laser treatments. Don't let fear get in the way. They can recommend sedation to make your experience as comfortable as possible. Best Dental Group is located in historic downtown Bartlett and is a multi 